Hello and welcome. My name is Nathan Castle, and I'm a product engineer on the ArcGIS Runtime SDK team. In this video, I'll introduce the concepts you'll need to work with spatial information in ArcGIS Runtime. I'll explain what a spatial reference is, how it defines a coordinate system to describe locations, how the spatial reference is determined for maps and geometries, how you can explicitly specify the spatial reference for your geographic data, and how Geometry Engine can simplify common spatial operations. Understanding spatial references is critical to your success in using ArcGIS Runtime. A spatial reference determines how a coordinate, or XY point, maps to a physical location on Earth by defining a coordinate system, a prime meridian, and a datum. The most significant aspect of the spatial reference is the coordinate system. Coordinate systems fall into one of two categories. Geographic coordinate systems use angular units such as degrees to define locations relative to the equator and prime meridian. GPS coordinates are in a geographic coordinate system known as WGS84. Projected coordinate systems define locations on a plane relative to an origin point. Projected coordinate systems are used to display Earth's curved surface on a flat surface, like a computer screen. Mercator is an example of a projected coordinate system. Different projections exist for different purposes, such as preserving area, length, or angle. For each projection, there is a portion of the map that is the least distorted. When representing a particular area, such as a city, state, or country, you should choose a map projection that minimizes distortion for that area. The size and orientation of an area, however, can make it impossible to accurately represent with a single map projection. It's important to know which spatial properties are preserved for the map projection you've chosen and the extent over which your projection meets your requirements. If you've ever used Google, Bing, or Here Maps, you've seen examples of a Mercator projection. Although those services and APIs use WebMercator for map display, their APIs and search tools use WGS84 coordinates. Points are projected from the WGS84 coordinates into the projected coordinates automatically. I wanted to point that out because it is a bit confusing. The coordinate system used at the API level is different from that used to display the map. ArcGIS Runtime handles this differently. All points are interpreted in the map spatial reference unless a different one is explicitly set. This gives you more control over how geometry is handled in your app, but it also means you need to understand and be deliberate about your choices. If you've worked with our public samples or dev labs, you've probably noticed that few explicitly set a spatial reference. ArcGIS Runtime will use the spatial reference of the first layer or base map you add to the map. Alternatively, you can explicitly specify a spatial reference at creation time. For example, the default base maps are on the Web Mercator spatial reference. If you create a map and add one of those base maps, the map will adopt the base map spatial reference. Note that the map isn't initialized with its spatial reference until it is loaded. Once the spatial reference is set, you cannot change it. Let's take a look at some coordinates in the Web Mercator projected coordinate system. Note that these coordinates aren't familiar if you're only used to seeing latitude longitude coordinates. Let's open up the debugger to get some more information about the spatial reference. I want to point out a few interesting details. The well-known ID is a unique identifier for the spatial reference. In this case, it is 3857. You can create spatial references directly from well-known IDs. See the documentation for a list of supported spatial references and their IDs. Web Mercator uses meters as its unit. Anytime you use ArcGIS runtime geometry methods to work with geometries in the spatial reference, results will be in meters. Let's apply what I've talked about so far to a common scenario. Plotting a latitude longitude point on an Esri Web Mercator base map. I went to Wikipedia and found that Redlands, California is located at 34.05 north by 117.18 west. I know this is in the WGS84 coordinate system, which is different from the Web Mercator base map. The first thing I'll do is create the map with the imagery base map and show it in a map view. Remember, the base map factory methods in ArcGIS runtime all create Web Mercator base maps. Next, I'll create a point at the specified coordinates. Notice that the map point constructor takes an x value followed by a y value. Because latitude corresponds to the y dimension and longitude x, the order of the values needs to be switched. Remember that these coordinates are in WGS84. When the spatial reference of your map doesn't match the spatial reference of your data, you need to be explicit to ensure your data is interpreted correctly. Finally, I'll create a graphic from the point, add the graphic to a graphics overlay, define a renderer, and then add the overlay to the map. This map is showing a point in the WGS84 spatial reference on a Web Mercator base map. In this case, ArcGIS Runtime handles the reprojection automatically. Alternatively, 
you could use the geometry engine.project method to convert to the desired spatial reference before plotting the point. ArcGIS Runtime also provides tools as part of Geometry Engine for manipulating geometry. You can use Geometry Engine to create measurements that accurately account for the curvature of the Earth, compare geometries, and create new geometries like buffers. There isn't enough time to cover all aspects of the Geometry Engine, so I want to encourage you to take a few minutes to familiarize yourself with what it offers. Anytime you're manipulating geometries, whether to measure, make comparisons, or transform, you should consider using Geometry Engine. Mapping real-world coordinates to 2D and 3D coordinate spaces can be challenging. Fortunately, ArcGIS Runtime has built-in capabilities to simplify this fundamental mapping task. If you want to learn more, Esri has published several guides to help further your understanding of spatial references. Check out the description for links to more resources. Thank you for watching. Thank you.